Uh, hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the first FRQ of the AP Physics C Mechanics exam. Um, I took this test, I think, four days ago, and I thought it would be a good idea to come on here and explain how to solve these problems. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the first one. We have a block of mass 2m on a ramp. The ramp is not frictionless, it has a coefficient of friction mu. Then we have another block of mass m on this flat surface, which is frictionless. The blocks collide with each other at x2, and then they have an inelastic collision, which means they stick together, and they move horizontally into this spring here, and they compress it to a max compression of distance x sub c and at x sub c the two block system comes to rest so let's let's get straight into the problem part a one where it is asking us to derive an expression for the speed v the way that we're going to solve this is using energy we see here that the energy that the bl block a has here is going to be its potential energy, which is mass times height times gravity. Its mass is 2m. The gravity is just g. And the height is going to be the, the vertical component of d, which is d sine theta. And then once it reaches the bottom, once it gets to here, all of that energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy so it'll be one half times the mass which is 2m times v squared but some of the energy is also lost due to the friction and the way we can calculate this is using work we know that as it's sliding down the ramp the normal force is going this way so n is going to be equal to mg cosine theta meaning that friction is going to be equal to mu mg cosine theta. And that means that the work done plus work is going to be, work is going to be the friction force mu mg cosine theta times the distance that it has affected the block for, which is d. And from here, we're gonna get this term by itself and the way we do that is by subtracting work so we'll get 2 mg d sine theta oh sorry I forgot the 2 here since the mass of the block is 2 so it'll be 2 m here minus mu 2 m g d cosine theta is equal to 1 half 2mv squared. We can see that the m's are going, the two m's are going to cancel out all through the equation, so we can get rid of all our two m's. Here, are the gd factors within these two terms, so we'll get that gd parentheses sine theta minus mu cosine theta. is equal to 1 half v squared and then once we solve for the final v we're gonna get square root of 2gd sine theta minus mu cosine theta that will be your final answer for your velocity and when we're deriving an equation expression for the spring constant of the spring first we need to find the velocity of the two block system so we know the velocity right before the collision will be v, and we know that due to momentum, 2m times v is equal to 3m times v final, which is going to be our, our speed after the collision. The m's cancel. v final is 2 thirds of v initial, which is the, the speed right before the collision 
So let me get rid of my calculations here since we already figured out our velocity. So I can make some extra space for our new calculations we're about to make. All right, there we go. So we know that our velocity is going to be two thirds of this. And from here, we can go back to our go back to using energy because we know that one half mv squared v final is equal to one half kx squared we can get rid of the k the one half to make it more simple and what we're looking for is the spring constant k it says here that we can just leave xc in terms of xc so we can just divide both sides by xc squared and we'll get mv squared over xc squared is equal to k and where we'll plug in our value of v final squared so v final is two-thirds of v initial v final squared is going to be four ninths v final 4 nines v initial squared which is 2 g d sine theta minus mu cosine theta all over x c squared and from here to make it more simple we can just move our 9 to the denominator and this 4 times this 2 will give you an 8 on the numerator. So from here, and I'm going to move the M in front of the 8, or behind the 8. So from here we get that the spring, co the K spring coefficient of friction is going to be 8 MGD sine parentheses sine theta minus mu cosine theta N parentheses all over 9XC squared. That's how you solve part A of this problem. Now let's go to the next part. Here we go, part B. We know that as the block is sliding down, if we write out our net force equation, it's going to be MA equals MG sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta and factor out the m's I know that the m's are all two m's but that doesn't really matter we see that our acceleration is equal to g sine theta minus mu g cosine theta and from here we can observe that our acceleration is a constant because since all of these terms are constant our acceleration is going to be a constant value and since our acceleration is a constant value that means that our velocity is changing at a constant rate so from the point here to here which on this graph is going to be here to here the velocity is going to be changing at a constant rate so it'll be a straight line and since we're calculating momentum all you have to do is multiply that slope by m and we know that a constant slope multiplied by a constant value is just going to be another constant slope so that doesn't really change our calculations we know that from t1 to t2 the momentum is going to stay the same and we know that in a in, in a perfectly inelastic collision momentum is also conserved but how about for here so let's write out our forces again ma 3ma is equal to negative kx we know that our acceleration is changing but we know that our x is also changing so if we want to find the dvdt or rather yeah if we want to find the velocity and the rate at which the velocity is changing we're going to look for the acceleration it'll be negative k 3m over x 
but this value is also changing. This value is becoming greater as the acceleration gets smaller, which means that the acceleration has a constant slope, meaning that if the acceleration corresponds to x, or negative, negative, negative x times a constant, our velocity is going to be negative one half constant x squared. So from here, our velocity is going to look like a negative x squared graph. So it's going to go down like this. Which if you think about it logically, this makes sense because as a spring gets compressed, the spring force grows larger, which means the spring acceleration grows larger, which means the velocity of the spring is going to be changing at a faster rate as it gets compressed further and further. And that's, lo that's what my explanation would be for B2. It's just that the force, it, the force corresponds to the compression. And as the compression grows greater, the force, which is the change in velocity, is growing greater, greater which explains why the slope of the velocity is getting steeper and steeper. There's your explanation. So now let's move on to the last slide. All right, for time t is greater than t4, the two block spring system oscillates with period t0. The process is re then repeated using a new ramp where th there is negligible friction between block A and the ramp. Indicate how the new period of oscillation in the ramp compares with the period of oscillation from the original procedure. All right, guys, so this is a pretty simple problem if you don't allow yourself to get tripped up by it. So we know that if the neg if the friction becomes neg negligible on the ramp, obviously our block is going to have a faster velocity as it comes down, a stronger acceleration, and that means that our system is going to have a faster velocity. But this does not change our period of accelerate uh, our period of oscillation, because as we know, uh, for a spring for an oscillating spring system. We can just start with the force equation. Ma is equal to kx, negative k, kx, and acceleration is equal to negative k over mx. And we're also told by simple harmonic motion that A is equal to negative omega squared x, making omega root k over m. Now we know that our m is actually going to be 3m since the block the masses of the block are going to be 3m. I'll write that out, although it doesn't matter in this problem all too much. Here we have it. And we know that our omega is 2 pi over t. 2 pi over t is equal to square root of k over 3m. And that gives us a t value of <clears throat> okay, so our value for t will become 2 pi root 3m over k. And now, as we can see, the factors that t is dependent on are the mass of the block system and the k, the coefficient, or rather, the constant of the spring. And in this experiment, neither of those two factors are touched. It's the coefficient of friction of the ramp that is affected and as we know that does not play a part in the period of oscillation and therefore the two periods of oscillation will be equal to each other and that's all I have for you guys today hopefully this cleared up any confusion and stay tuned for more physics tutorials